Today we're going to talk about how to install FluidPy on the Big Tree Tech Manta M8P version 2. Now, as you can see, there's two different versions of the actual Raspberry Pi that I'm going to talk about. There are many more, but these both have Wi Fi. One does not have EMMC, one does. The one we're going to focus on today is the one with out so let me show you how to hook this up real quick you can see there's two different uh, connections right here we'll line up all the holes like so then we'll push down on this side for a click and on this side so the next thing that we need to do is actually load firmware so i'm going to grab this now keep in mind i've done this a couple of times so it's going to pop an error message Normally you won't see that on a fresh SD card, but let me plug this in. You'll hear a beep. I'm going to connect the actual Wi-Fi antenna right here. So you can see there's a little cup on the bottom. It's going to go into this little port right here. So you'll just align it over it, push down, and that's connected. So I'm going to power it with PSU power because I found out that using the actual 5 volts is not enough. But I'm also going to connect the actual HDMI cable right here so I don't forget later on so that we can actually see what's occurring. So the next thing that I want to do is actually go over to the desktop. So on the desktop, we're on the Marlin GitHub page, or excuse me, not Marlin, the Big Tree Tech GitHub page. We're going to click Repositories. Then we're going to type Manta. M8P, then you can download to your own computer the actual zip of this whole configuration, or you could navigate to it and then open up the PDF. In this case, I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to show it to you real quick. Here's the actual manual. So we're going to search on CM4 and then hit enter. So it's control F and then type in CM4, enter. We're going to go to write OS. And as you can see, they talk to, you about, talk to you about the process of doing it. But just above this, there's actually a link to the actual image. So we're going to go with Fluid Pie. Some people like this, some people hate it. I actually like it a lot. So I'm going to paste it right here and then hit Enter. And you can download it just by clicking on this. And then, of course, you're going to have to extract it on your computer. But I've already done that, so I'm going to go to Raspberry Pi Imager. My version right now is 1.7.4, so I'm going to click Choose Image that we want to do for storage. Then Choose OS, we're going to use Use Custom. It's in our Downloads folder already extracted, so I'm going to click here, then Open, then Write, then Yes. This will take a few minutes, so I'll pause the video for a second. And then when I come back, I'll explain a little bit more. Okay, as you can see, it's almost complete. We'll have a message in a second saying that it's complete. We'll click continue. Then we'll go over to the desk for a second. I'll pop out the drive. Then we're going to have to pop it back in. Go back over to the desktop. You're going to see an error message like this probably afterwards. Click cancel. There might be a second one. So I have two at the moment. Now let's go over to the regular drive. So I'm going to go to the boot drive. I'm going to then look for the Fluid Pi supplicant. Right click. You're going to have to edit this in something like Notepad++ or uh, VS Code just for simplicity. That way the writing won't be different. So let me open that up. As you can see right here, this is the type of network I'm going to be using. It's pretty secure. It's not great. So I'll remove the comments. Then I'll put in my actual name of my router and my password so that I can communicate via Wi-Fi. So I'm going to pause the video for a moment, save this file out, and then we'll pick up from there. Okay, now that I've saved it out, I'm going to pop it out and put it in the actual board. So you'll remove your SD card or micro SD. We'll lift 
this up a little bit. We'll turn this or invert it so that it's facing down. So you can see that it's going to be this way. And then insert it here. Next, we're going to power the board, which uh, I have connected to the PSU power. So you can see that I'm going to have to plug it in. If everything works, we'll be able to see it on the computer because I'm going to be able to show it to you. So let's change to that. So this is going to be blank for a second while it's booting. But as you can see, it's starting. So it may resize the actual drive here someplace. And then what will happen is something else. So you can see the resizing occurring. It's going to take about five seconds according to what they're saying. And then it will probably create a secure shell in the background or SSH. So now that that's actually complete, you can see that it's booting with Raspberry Pi's actual OS. But we're going to have to actually update the OS in a minute. So I'm going to show you how to do that while uh, the screen actually takes a little bit longer to actually boot. So we'll go over to the actual desktop for a second. And on the desktop, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go to the router. So I'm going to blur out part of this to actually see if it's on the network. So I'm going to go to connected devices. We'll get an actual pop up in a second saying what's the password. So let me put that in. Now I'll click enter. And we should see our device in here if things have booted correctly. Let's double check down here. So it doesn't really look like it's there, but let's go back over to the actual desktop. We'll grab the actual IP address that it says for FluidPi, and then we'll click over here and paste it. And we'll see if it comes up. So it looks like it's almost ready. This might not work right away for you. So one of the things I like to do is do an update first under the hood. We could do a force refresh, but it's going to throw an error probably. So hopefully it doesn't, but maybe it does. So let's give this a second and see what happens. So let's go to underneath the hood here. This is TerraTerm, so I'm going to say new connection. We already have the actual 1.5 for 192.168.1.5. We'll click OK. And then we'll wait to see if we actually get a connection to it in the actual terminal. So it looks like we do. So we'll click Continue. We'll put in pi for the username and raspberry for the actual password, or in this case, passphrase. Click OK. It's going to take a second to actually populate. Apparently the Wi-Fi has gotten a little bit slow. So we're going to have to first do an update. So what I want to do is I want to say sudo, which is sudo. Then I'm going to say apt. Then I'm going to say update. So I may have to add a space. And then enter. It's going to ask for the password, which is rasp, vary, and then enter. And this is basically going to go out and check to see all the things that need to be pulled down and generate the list. Then we'll do upgrade which is the same command, just the last word is upgrade. So this may take a second to do. The next step is probably going to take about half an hour, depending upon your network. And then we'll go from there. So I'll probably pause the video in between that in a second. So let's see if we can do this real quick. Let's do upgrade. Press enter. It's probably going to ask for a password or yes in this case. We'll hit enter and this will probably take about a half an hour. So I'm going to pause it and we'll come back. Okay, now that it's finished actually updating, let's go back over to the web browser. See if we can force a refresh. Looks like we can. 
We don't have this file yet created, so we're going to copy this name. We're going to go over to configuration. We're going to hit the plus sign. We're going to add a file and we're going to paste the name right here, then save. So now we'll click on the file. We have to go over to the mana page again. We're going to go to hardware for version two. We're going to, excuse me, not hardware. We're going to go over to firmware and we're going to click on the config file. We're going to then click on the raw file. It's copied. Now we'll go back and we'll right click and apparently paste isn't there so we'll hit control V on the keyboard and now we have the file in there but now we have to grab the actual MCU so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this right here copy it so I'll right click or excuse me I'll hit control C or control X is actually better so we can take it out move to the top or scroll to the top and then we'll paste it right here. Now this is not our MCU. This is just stubbed out. So we're going to have to go back over to here and actually find it. But before we can find it, we need the command. So we'll go to Clipper. We'll go to Installation and Configuration. Installation. Scroll down. And the command is right here, which is list the device's serial by ID and anything that's there, which is that little star or wildcard. So we'll copy it. We'll go back over here, right click, then hit enter. There it is. So we'll highlight this, right click again. You can hit enter if you like, just to make things simple. Minimize this, go back over to fluid pie configuration. And I'm gonna type serial colon space control V on the keyboard. And you can see they're different. So to comment this one out, I'm going to hit control forward slash, which is underneath the question mark on your keyboard. And that will comment it out, or you can put the hash symbol in front of it. So there's our actual configuration. So we'll do a save and restart. There will be other issues. You'll see them in just a second. So here are the issues down here. The simple solution is you click on configurations, scroll down, there'll be a fluid right here for a fluid config hit control a on the keyboard then control c to copy close it go back over to your printer config hit the page down button on your keyboard or hit the uh, scroll to the very end or arrow down then hit control v That'll put in your configuration so you can do save and restart. There will be more issues that we'll see in a second. And some of those issues will be things like ADC out of range. That means there's no thermistor connected. So let me show you that real quick on the actual computer. So on the computer, you can see that uh, we actually don't have our thermistors connected. So I'm going to pull one out here to show you what it looks like. You see the glass bead, this tells temperature, and then here's the two pin connector. So we're going to have to connect first to our hot end. Normally I would do this with the board off. It's just safer. And then I'll do the other one right here. And I'll show you how these work in just a moment. But for now I'll just leave those there. So let's go back over to the computer. On the desktop, we'll try and do a firmware restart and see if that error message goes away, which it says. But now we have this issue, but they give us a link, so we'll click on it. As you can see, there's two commands that we need to run right here, so I'm going to copy those. But before I run them, I'm going to finish the updates. So I'm going to click over to software updates right here and you can click update right here and this will take care of your actual fluid pie update then you can click software update again do the next one this might take a little bit more time but that's fine just remember uh for those watching if you like this video please remember to hit the like and subscribe and share if you would like as well so this is almost done Sometimes if it takes longer than it normally should, you can almost hit refresh, but I think this will finish. 
In this case, we're going to have to hit refresh. Then we'll go to software updates again and do the last update. This one probably is going to be a little bit longer than the other ones, probably about one or two minutes. So if you don't remember when I was talking about this actual configuration file, these are actual pins on the board. So I'll show you real quick for the actual enable pin being it's got a wild card in front or excuse me, not a wild card an exclamation point in front of it and says PC 14. That means negate or the opposite of so either one or zero. If it's a one and there's an exclamation point, it's a zero. If it's a zero and there's an exclamation point, it's a one. So that's all you need to know about that. But let's click on this real quick and let me bring it over so you can see over here for enable you have PC 14 so these map to your actual pins on your board this is very important when you're working with it that these pins are correct sometimes they are not in your configuration file and you can verify them over here so let's go back and see if it actually finished updating it looks like it has so we're good there now we have the one last step where we have to do this and this fixes an OS problem that we're gonna see that's right here so you see this issue so we'll click on our Terraterm session right click then click OK then enter this should in theory update everything you may have to restart your actual Raspberry Pi system on your Manta but let's see what happens maybe it works and it may also ask for in this case the password which is rasp vary and then press enter and hopefully that's complete so let's minimize this check to see if this actually is going to actually work so we'll do a force refresh and it looks like all the errors are gone so let me show you real quick on the actual desktop what happens when I grab one of the thermistors. You're going to have to watch up here to see what happens when I actually put my finger over it. So you notice how the temperature is going up right here? That means the thermistor is working. That's one way to test it is the actual heat of your body. The other thing that we can test if we want to see console commands, note there are no end stops loaded at the moment with the actual connection down here so these are all going to say triggered when we tried this command so let me show you the command real quick on the desktop it's going to be m119 and then enter so you see how they all say triggered so if you like my tutorial please press the like button and subscribe and for my patrons i will place a thank you note at the very end of this video and everyone take care, be safe, and remember to like and subscribe. And by the way, I didn't forget my patrons, the people on PayPal, and buy me a cup of coffee in the thank you note.